Hi guys. Um, so again, I recorded a 25 minute video and it decided to bomb up. So I think I'm just going to do like five minute intervals if that's possible. And please excuse my dog. She is being very rude. Polly. Polly. Sorry. Okay. So, um, in this video, I'm gonna, it's, it's quite like a short lifespan, if I can say, um, it's kind of focused on, um, my years of like six years old to about eight years old. Um, okay. So my dad was obviously still trying to find himself and everything. Um, there was a lot of guys involved. Um, I specifically remember the one day my mom and I went shopping for groceries and uh, we were outside in the parking lot, like getting ready to go inside the mall. And my mom said to me, Amy, do you know why we got divorced? And I was like, no, not really, because I mean, like they had a good relationship. There was no fighting. There was like nothing wrong. And, um, like my mom always said, like, I, I still love your dad. So I was like very confused. Anyway, so she put it out very bluntly, your dad is gay. And um, I was in grade four at the time. So I don't know how old that is. I think it might be eight years old, <clears throat> eight, nine. And um, I said, oh, okay. And that was it. Like, there wasn't questions it wasn't anything and I think it's because I'm a very accepting and understanding person so although I don't think I understood the whole concept of being gay um I accepted dad for being dad and if if, if he wants to like boys then that's it like that's his decision like I, I didn't question anything I didn't like ew that's gross or you know like I just it was what it was and I remember literally saying, oh, okay. And um, my mom did ask me, she said to me, do you know what gay means? And I said, yeah, it means that dad likes boys or guys. And she said, okay. And we kind of left it at like, like that. Like it was just plain and simple. Anyway, so, um, yeah, uh, I think during those years, I definitely decided like I didn't want to be with my dad. Um, not that I didn't want to be with him, but I didn't want to be in the presence of people I didn't know and the partying and the drinking and all of that. And I think with me being old, I was able to have a little bit more say um, or more of a say than I did when I was younger. So um, what also happened was... Um, I'm just trying to see okay so what happened was one day my mom got involved with this this guy who was for me my stepdad we lived with him for eight years and um we were we were still living in the flat by my grand's house and we would often go down um and, and have supper by her because it was easy and also if my mom was working late or whatever, you know, we were with my gran. And um, so this guy who ended up being our stepdad, I'm, I'm not going to mention names simply because of like legal reasons, but um, yeah, he, he was an insurance broker or is an insurance broker. And I, th I think my gran and them were getting a quote from him because they had just been broken into. And I remember sitting there watching TV or whatever, and my mom and them were all talking there, or my mom was just kind of sitting in. Um, but obviously, like, my grand and grandpa were talking to him and getting quotes and stuff like that. And then um, one day, like a week later, he pitched up also around supper time kind of thing. And my grand or grandpa asked, like, oh, is it, like, do we need to sign documents or something like that? And he said, no, he's actually here to see my mom. And uh, basically, he, I think, 
took her number and one thing led to another and they started dating. So I'll update you now. I just need to stop for five minutes. Okay, guys, I'm back. So um, basically, yeah, so um, my mom and them started dating and I can't really remember the timeline um, between them dating and us moving into his house. But for me, I, it, like, it felt like a month or so. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we moved into his house and it was a very different environment. Um, my brother and I had our own rooms. Um, so, I mean, like there wasn't a space and everything it was a decent sized house. We had a pool, we had a lovely garden. Um, my brother and I used to play in the garden like army men. And I, I just remember like we used to shoot each other and whatever. Not, not shoot each other, but like pretend. Come, this is my, my baby, Holly. And um, anyway, so yeah, like we had a very different childhood growing up with him. Um, I was very, I became very, very, very close uh, to him. Um, I don't know if it was because like I was seeking a dad relationship and I didn't have it with my dad. Um, but he also showed a lot of, uh, attention to me, um, even like unfairly so to my brother that I was the favorite, like even, I think even like over my mom, I was a favorite, like I was prioritized. Um, if Amy wanted to do something, Amy got to do something like I was really spoiled and, um, like I, I loved him. He was like my everything. Um, he was like, just, we were always together. We did everything together. Like he, he used to have motorbikes and stuff and I used to sit with him in the garage while he was cleaning it or, um, I don't know, breaking it down and then fixing it or whatever. Like I literally did everything with him. And, um, we had a really, really, really close relationship. Um, like if he wanted to watch freaking I don't know, Formula One or something on the TV. I don't give a shit about that, but I sat there and I watched it with him. And um, yeah, like it, it's, it's, it was, to me, it wasn't weird. It was like, it was, I finally have a dad that cares for me and loves me. And I, um, you know, like I have the support that I want. And he was very protective over me, which, I took it as a good thing because like I, I wanted someone to love me and um, just, you know, like I, I didn't have to fight for attention or approval or anything. It wasn't really there. Um, also, we share a birthday. So we are very alike in a way. Um, Holly, off. Off. Well, I wouldn't say we were alike, but in certain ways, obviously being um, like the same, um, what's called like star sign, there's certain things that are alike. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. He, he really was my everything. Like he, he became a father. And I think with me also distancing myself from my my biological dad, um, he he meant a lot to me. Like, um, yeah, like I don't know. Like he um, he he showed me what a dad was but in his own way so i'm not saying it was right but i felt loved and i felt accepted and i felt like i didn't need to prove myself i could be myself and um i loved him i really loved him um, so just getting 
back onto that. Um, so it wasn't a very um, normal situation or normal family style. I don't know how to say it, but for example, he was very like military based. Um, we would get fetched from school and then my brother and I would have like 10 minutes or so to go to the kitchen and quickly make something to eat. And like, this is bearing in mind that we were about six, I was about six to eight years old. So my brother was maybe two to four years old at the most. And um, then after we had helped ourselves to something to eat, we had to go to our bedroom separately. So I wasn't even allowed to like play with my brother or he wasn't allowed to play with me or anything like that. Uh, we were in separate bedrooms and we had to lock ourselves in the bedroom. And we were only allowed out um, if we needed the, the bathroom. And we're only allowed in the bathroom for like maximum five minutes. So like if you need a number two, you gotta push that out. Like um it was very strict and it was very weird. Like obviously looking back now. And um yeah, so there was just like not normal things that happened. So my brother being young, my mom um, bought him Spider-Man curtains one weekend. And um, obviously him being locked in in his bedroom, he got bored. I mean, like my six-year-old, nearly six-year-old daughter uh, can play with her Barbies for about an hour. And then she needs like some stimulation and she needs people, you know. So from getting picked up from let, let's say two o'clock at the latest and then sitting there until five o'clock until my mom gets home. It's a long time. And uh, I, I used to do my homework and stuff and then I would read books and I, I was very much able to be by myself. Like I'm still like that. I would rather be by myself than go out. Like I'm, I'm a granny. But anyway, so my brother has these Spider-Man curtains and he's very bored and he finds some scissors and he decides to cut them in half so that they're even with the, <laughs> with the windowsill. So mom gets home and she's like, something's not looking right, you know. And my brother's like, oh, I, I think I did something wrong. <laughs> and um, so anyway, my mom wasn't really the disciplinarian and I don't think she was allowed to be. So whether she wanted to put my brother in the corner, like for timeouts or something, that was not how you discipline. So my stepdad, oh, I just want to explain why we were, why we had to lock ourselves up into our rooms because it sounds a bit weird, but um, he he's, was an insurance broker and he used to work from home and his work study place or whatever was on the other side of the house but we were told to lock ourselves up in the the room because he didn't want like any noise or anything so he didn't sound unprofessional um to like his his clients over the phone so we weren't allowed to watch tv we weren't allowed to like make a big bang or something in the kitchen or you know like it really was hectic like you don't talk you do not talk don't let the dog bark um it, it was it was really hectic i mean there's things that you can't control and we're six to eight years old and 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 we gotta sort this out you know so it was quite hectic and i mean also with my brother being so young i would have to get home and make him something to eat to make sure that he's had something to drink and stuff like that so there's another another aspect of me having to grow up quite quickly and and just like adapt uh, so yeah, um, going back to the curtain story, my mom told uh, my stepdad what had happened and my stepdad told my brother to wait in this room and he's going to be disciplined. 
and I think he had to wait there for like an hour. And you know how scary that is as a child. I mean, if you wait, you're waiting for something to come and you don't know what the hell's going to go on for like 10 minutes. That's scary. But for an hour, like you're running things through your head, you're freaking traumatizing yourself. So after an hour or so, um, passes my stepdad goes into the room closes or locks the door and my mom and I are kind of like in my room wondering what the hell is going on we used to get smacked with a wooden spoon which I think was normal then um and so we hear a smack and the uh, then my brother my brother is very cheeky and uh he said that wasn't sore <laughs> so there's another smack and the wooden spoon breaks on his bum bare bum so he gets hit with something else i cannot remember what it was it was like the first thing just grab and smack so he had three big bruises on his bum and it was actually reported at school to my mom like my mom got phoned the one day to come into the school and was like why are there bruises on my brother's bum like what happened and she kind of just explained that Brent was being cheeky and he got a smack and they might have smacked a little bit too hard or something so like it was really hectic in that sense um also once i think i was in grade one or two at the time it was like when we were collecting stickers and marbles and stuff like that and i had this huge collection of stickers like huge like foul with slip um what are those like plastic sleeves and we used to put the stickers on the plastic sleeves because then they could come on and off and we used to swap stickers and stuff like that and um the one day I really wanted to swap some stickers with this one girl who had like those fluffy ones and they were like Winnie the Pooh and I loved Winnie the Pooh because my mom loved Winnie the Pooh and I just like I wanted these Winnie the Pooh stickers for my mom and she didn't want to swap <laughs> so um I don't know what I did but I apparently somehow stole her whole sticker book for these few stickers and my mom obviously found it in my bag or something I'm not too sure she found it and she asked me a few questions and I was honest and I said yes I took them so my mom said with you being honest I'm going to be taking your sticker book away but you won't be getting like any smack or anything because you told the truth and like I was thinking it cool like my mom will probably take it away for like a week then my stepdad gets involved and he's like no we're taking it away for a year a year my sticker book stayed under their side table for a year and i knew exactly what date i would be getting it back but i was not allowed to look at it i wasn't allowed to touch it i wasn't allowed to do a thing and obviously when i got the stickers back i mean like stickers were out of style so it was like a waste of everything but anyway so i didn't get stickers and i got additional punishment so you sent to my room and same thing like now i'm thinking what the hell is gonna go like what, what am i gonna get smacked with this time so again wooden spoon comes out you gotta pull your pants down and your panties down and bare bum get smacked by the wooden spoon and it breaks so the first thing that is grabbed is my school shoes which used to have like little heels and I was hit so hard that the school shoes split and it was like heel and shoe like that. And that was how we were disciplined and how we had to live. And it was very like then we didn't question it, but it's not normal. Like that was abuse. Um, Hi guys, okay, so this is going to be a quick one because I'm running out of time. Um, but basically, yes, so we had a very odd upbringing for eight years of our lives. 
And um, what started happening with him and I was he started grooming me. And I only learned this when I started seeing a psychologist when I was like 20 or something. But um, my mom didn't know anything. Family didn't know anything. I didn't know anything like it, it was just like he, he was my father I loved him um he loved me back like yes I was the favorite but didn't matter to me because I loved him and I, I got the acceptance and everything you know so looking back now um when we moved in and I was about six years old I feel like he started to take advantage already then um, because he took over the dad figure, obviously, and he knew that I wasn't close to my dad, but I needed a dad, you know, and he knew or obviously saw that I needed that um, approval and he was able to give it to me. And um, so I, I think that was already when the grooming started. For those of you who don't know what grooming is, pedophiles often start grooming children into making them feel comfortable with them. And it's often family members, family friends, um, people that you know and get close to because you they need you to trust them and uh, that is exactly how our relationship relationship was like I trusted him with all my life and um, I, I think with him already started grooming then there were certain things that he did that was just normal like I mean, we would go to the mall as a family and he would hold my hand and not my mom's. And like, for me, I think at the time, and even for my mom, I, I don't think it was abnormal because we had a good relationship. So my mom probably thought like, oh, cool. They, they've got like a good father and daughter relationship. But there were things like that where he actually neglected my mom and put me first, which is weird. Um, you know, obviously thinking back now, but it was never noticed at the time. And then, um, like looking at six to eight years, I definitely, definitely think that this was like his prime grooming time. Um, he became very protective. So, I mean, like, you know, when you, I don't know, eight years old and you have a crush on this boy and then next week you like the next boy and whatever like I wasn't even allowed to talk to boys in primary school and like it was hectic I was not allowed to go sleep over at places like my best friends I was not allowed to unless there were no siblings so oh and if there was no father so it had to be a single mom with no boys at all uh simply because i don't know maybe he was jealous i don't know the story but there was a lot of um protectiveness and like i just i was never able to like we used to have socials at school i think i went to one in the whole time that i was in in primary school and i, I was there for like two hours um so yeah, it, it was very weird. So I'm just going to stop this video now because I'm running out of time. But I will be covering um, 8 to 12 years old in the next video. If you have any comments or questions or anything, if you're experiencing anything like this, if you have experienced anything, please comment away, question away. I will try and help you as much as I can or just give you advice or you know, like, if I can't give advice, I'm here to listen. Um, also, like I said, please subscribe. And if you know other people that um, have gone through anything like this, send the link and um, 
you know, because soon I'll start talking about proper things.